I grew up on Long Island in New York. Growing up, I studied classical piano. My family very much wanted me to take piano lessons, especially because my grandma was an amazing classical piano player, so sort of was following in those footsteps. The classical piano route is just a really good way to get your technical chops up. Debussy and Ravel were a big influence on my musical vocabulary. After studying classical, I kind of wanted to go the jazz route. I really wanted to learn how to improvise and play Bill Evans and stuff like that, um, Thelonious Monk, etc. So that's kind of why I wanted to go to Berkeley. And I also wanted to go there to study film scoring. I knew that I could do both of those things there. My interest in scoring films and TV came from the Shawshank Redemption. My dad was like, you need to watch this movie. It's very important. And then we watched it and the music, Thomas Newman scored it and it really blew me away. And that's when I decided I really would like to try to do this. That was kind of my leap to Berklee College of Music in Boston. I knew that I would major in film scoring at Berkeley with also a focus in studying jazz piano. I took lessons all four years with Steve Hunt, who actually played with Alan Holdsworth. I was always a fan, and the fact that I was paired with him as his student was really cool. So I learned a lot from him. In my senior year at Berkeley, I took this class with Ruth Mendelssohn called Documentary Practicum, and that was like my turning point where I realized I really want to do these documentaries and at the time, I was watching Planet Earth and all these BBC nature shows, and I was like, I really want to do that. That would be so cool. So my joy really started to come from composition. I wanted to learn about documentary scoring because it's much different than live action movies or animation. It's very nuanced, and you're really trying to tell the story with music. Bleeding Fingers is a joint venture between Russell Emanuel, Steve Kofsky, and Hans Zimmer. And the environment working there has been a really collaborative process. Um, it's really great to be in a building full of composers where you can sort of bounce ideas off of each other, show each other what you're working on, um, brainstorm together. The music of Prehistoric Planet, the goal was to make a score that was otherworldly sounding because we wanted to transport the listener back 66 million years ago. It needs to get to the surface to take its very first breath. What we really ended up doing was combining an orchestra with some really obscure instruments. For example, we recorded Gorkum Sen, who is a musician in Turkey who has this amazing instrument called the Yabahar. And I can't really describe the sound even, it's just so unique. So we paired that up with the orchestra. Also, Anje, Hans, Russell, and I, we built um, custom instruments for the show. So we used fossils and replica bones and petrified wood and things like this to give a prehistoric feel to the score. The Simpsons is much different. It's, it is very orchestral, but a lot of the um, episodes have themes. Every year, three scary stories. Two of them good and a lame one in the middle. I'll put an end to that. <laughs> <sighs> oh, stupid hard work. I'll put an end to that. It's really depending on the joke we're telling.
it's really just using two different parts of your brain. So one, one day you're in Springfield and maybe you're writing a funny song and then you just kind of have to switch back. <laughs> so, but also, luckily, you have the picture to draw inspiration from. So what you're looking at is going to inform you on what to write. Everything is equally informative when you're watching something and deciding how you're going to score it. It does depend on the dialogue. It depends on the picture. It depends on how much people are talking, how nuanced do we need to be, or is it a wide shot of something where we can really amp up the music. Everything that I write is inspired by the story. I think that's yeah. the most important part, because you are telling someone else's story, and you want to get it right with the music. My orchestral piece, Winter Rhapsody. My style is very melodic. If I wasn't scoring to picture and I wasn't... In a way, when you're scoring to picture, you're constricted because you have to do justice to the story that you're telling. But in concert music, you can do whatever you want. So when I'm just writing concert music, my music's very melodic. It has some jazz influence in the harmonies, um, but it also draws a lot from the classical music that I played when I was young. My experience writing concert music, since it's very orchestral, has definitely um, fed into my film music. The classical training that I had in the past definitely helps me out every day when I'm writing. The technical foundation is very helpful. I take a lot of my inspiration from Debussy, which I played so much of his music growing up. And again, that's what my grandma was always playing for me. I love that sort of music and that era of classical music. And it, the harmonic language inspires my music today. When my grandma was 11 years old, she was living in France. It was during World War II. The Nazis were actively arresting people at this time. And they arrived at her house where her, her father had already passed, but her mother and her brother were living with her at the time. And they came to arrest them. But my grandma, for some reason, was not on the list. So before my grandma could even say anything, her mother pushed her out of the way and because the Nazis were asking, well, who's that? And then her mom said, you have no business with her. She's not on the list. And then they arrested her mom and her brother, and she never saw them again. So my grandma um, was essentially raised by her piano teacher, Andre, who gave her lessons and just brought her up because she no longer had a mother. So in a way, music kind of saved her life. I actually inherited the piano when my grandma passed away two years ago. It's like 110 years old or something. It's very inspiring because she was 11 years old when all of this happened, and that's not the only time she dodged the Nazis. Like, this woman was literally amazing, like running away from this situation. On multiple occasions, they were coming to find her, and she somehow essentially escaped death. Like, she was meant to move on, I believe. So the piano there symbolizes motivation for me. 